Watch it. And let's party. Jess Franco is rightly remembered as a kind of sleaze provocateur whose films are more skin flick than anything of actual cinematic value. What I'm saying is, I'm not a fan. I think his films exemplify just about everything terrible about the exploitation genre. Warm flesh and blood behind cold iron bars. Driven beyond the limits of endurance. Forced to perform degrading acts which strip them of all humanity. Whatever success he had, to me it feels like an unhappy accident. That being said, his impact on exploitation is undeniable. And when fellow schlock peddler Roger Corman took the newly created New World Pictures to the Philippines in search of low production costs, one of the first films produced was based on Franco's 1969 women in prison film, 99 Women. Titled The Big Dollhouse, the Jack Hill-directed film would be the beginning of an entire cycle of women in prison movies shot primarily in the Philippines. Movies like Women in Cages, Black Mama, White Mama, and The Big Bird Cage. Much of these movies retained a similar aesthetic, largely due to the same production company, frequent use of the same actors, and budget constraints. Now, don't get me wrong, these movies are cheap, but they absolutely rule. It's just that they kind of blend together. Why my personal favorite of these films is 1974's The Arena. The movie retains most of the expected plot and thematic elements found in your typical women in prison flick. Wrongful imprisonment, scantily clad gals, torture, revolt. But its Spartacus inspired design makes it for an interesting turn. Roger Corman originally offered the directing gig of The Arena to a young Martin Scorsese. But the filmmaker decided to pass and do a movie he'd written himself called Mean Streets. And even though Mean Streets is my favorite Scorsese film, I always wonder what a Scorsese-directed arena would have been like. Instead, we got Steve Carver as the director. Carver isn't a terrible director, and his style is maybe a more perfect fit for the lyric material here. And he'd go on to direct Chuck Norris in two of the action star's better movies in the early 80s. The arena stars Margaret Markov and Pam Greer, who had worked together in the previous year's Black Mama, White Mama, chained together for most of that movie. Markov had begun gaining attention in the genre for her work in films like The Hot Box, but the arena would prove to be her final major film role after marrying the movie's producer and retiring. Pam Greer seemingly strutted into fame through these women in prison movies. Even though she'd had virtually no experience and uh, no training that I was aware of, I just felt she was unnatural. They gave me the actor studio, uh, the actor's workshop, the myth that they gave me all these great books on Stanislavski, right? So I'm learning this profound work, and I'm going to do a Roger Corman <laughs> Booties in the Jungle movie. So I said, I'm going to do it. Well, I don't care if it's a three movie. I'm going in and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> First appearing in The Big Dollhouse with her name popping up under the film's opening song, Longtime Woman, sung by Greer herself. Not bad for a face we don't see after about two-thirds of the movie. She fares better in her following roles, playing a sadistic guard in Women in Cages, a panther lady in Twilight People, and even getting eaten by a lion in the exploitation version of Git Carter Hitman. I still don't know how they did that. In any case, Greer's growing persona of a tough, fierce, intelligent, and powerful woman was greatly suited for that of an African warrior. I am a Maui of Nubia. She is the highlight of a fairly by-the-numbers sword and sandals flick, but her and Markov make for an interesting duo, and it's surprisingly gripping to have female leads for this kind of movie. When we get to the film's inevitable revolt sequence, Greer, with suitable assistance from Markov, brings enough gravitas to sell us on it. Plus, we get plenty of gladiator matches and sword plays icing on the cake. Definitely try and track down a widescreen version of this movie, though. Only in some of the arena's more obvious exploitation trappings does the movie hold itself back, but it's a unique enough entry into the women in prison subgenre to stand on its own. So while it may get melodramatic at times, some of the violence has clearly been chopped out, and the movie still has to battle against its small budget shortcomings. The arena is still a badass Babes with Swords action movie. And at a smooth 83 minutes, it is absolutely worth your time. 
Rule of the arena. We're gladiators. Slaves! Romans are pigs. <laughs>